Here's a quick table of contents on how I went through and completed this video. Uh, feel free to jump through and go to where you want. Uh, main part is going to be part three and four where I go through and show how I wired up each one. All right. So this time it's going to be a little more fun. We're going to learn the basics of the wiring. I've had a few questions about this. A few people messaged me directly and a couple of comments as well. So we'll walk around. I'll show you some of the main wiring concepts and how it works, where to find a lot of this information on your own as well. There's a lot of good documentation, just as long as you know where to look for it. I have no idea if this is gonna turn out right, but I figured it'd be fun to go through some of the main steps of running an ECU standalone while I'm driving. And of course, to let you listen to this noise. It's just a thing of beauty. All right, so there's three things that I've really found to be successful as you're doing an implementation of a standalone ECU, Mega Squirt, Speed Wino, whatever it is. First up, it's the read. You gotta know everything you need to do. If you're just going out there blind turkey, you say, hey, I've got a couple of diagrams and I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time. So read up on everything you can. Make sure you know everything about the hardware of the ECU. Make sure you know everything about the software of the ECU. And then turn your attention to your own car. Uh, for example, do you have low resistance injectors or high resistance injectors? That makes a difference on how you wire up. You know, components like that. Number two, this is a, kind of a fun one. Make sure you got good power. I mean, come on. If you're trying to do your ECU, you gotta make sure that you have power to that ECU as you're cranking the starter. Not just power why it's on accessory, power why it's on run, but it has to be while you're cranking the starter. Listen to this. Oh, I love doing that. I'm gonna get sidetracked by that throughout this. Number three. It's working on the inputs. Anything that's gonna be an input value into the ECU, that's up next. I mean, you gotta get, in my priority order, it's to go and to get the TAC working, uh, basically get an input crate signal or cam sensor, whichever one you're going after. Then after that, get temperature sensors working, uh, get AFR, that's really important. If you're doing a standalone, make sure you got good AFR. After that, to work on the outputs, injectors, you know, uh, spark. Spark is gonna take you the most time. That's usually the one I do first before injectors. And then you're gonna work on other outputs such as your idle air valve, your tachometer, you know, sensors that uh, are not exactly dependent to make the engine run. Um, you know, my idle air valve, before I switched over to Speedwino, I set my throttle body at somewhere where I knew it would run. I basically disabled the idle air valve and I said, all right, I know if I crank over or idle with my normal ECU, at that time it was another one. Um, so I had good success that way. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and talk through. I took some uh, recorded sessions while I was sitting down on a chair and uh, talk through some of the key points that you're gonna be running into as you're going through and doing your standalone ECU. This is just me, this is my hobby. Yes, I, I've done ECUs on my daily drivers, and like that. but you know, it's, it's just a hobby. You know, take the time, understand that if you're putting a standalone ECU, you run the risk of blowing your engine. Whether you run it lean, whether you wire up something wrong, you're running the risk there. So take time on that step number one that I called out, learn everything you can. Don't skip. If you don't understand something, ask questions until you do. All right, so this will be fun. I've got my old uh, Mega Squirt. I can walk through it. This is a version 3.0 board. It's not a 3.5.7. Um, but we'll go through it, kind of show you some of the neat things in it. Now, I'm not going to pull out my Speed Wino. Part of the reason why is because I have not made a way to quick connect it and disconnect it. 
it's, uh, it's all mounted directly to the Speedwino. So there's a harness that goes all the way from the engine bay all the way into my Speedwino right now. There is some quick disconnects, but they're wire by wire. So if I disconnect everything, I'm, I'm kind of in a little bit of hurt. And it'll take me a little bit to go through. So throughout the whole time, I'm going to post up images uh, from the Speedwino file and kind of follow along with how all those are being wired. So I showed this a little earlier, but I want to go through and start off in this order. So I'm going to talk about the cam crank sensors, then the CLT, the IAT, then the map sensor, and then the AFR. So here we go. So you want to make sure you understand what type of crank trigger you have, the Hall versus VR, what your system is set up for. Um, in Megasquirt, you have the ability to use the oppo circuit, which means as it grounds out, there's a little light bulb in there, essentially a photo circuit in there, that lights up and says, hey, that fired. It's a great circuit if you're using a hall, a hall sensor, bad circuit if you're using a hall sensor with a high tooth count. For a 60 minus two crank wheel, and you're using the opto circuit, you're probably gonna have a bad day at higher RPM because that opto circuit takes time to light up and it's not gonna be quick enough to keep up with you. The other one is a VR circuit where it uh, goes up and down and that's what's essentially converting it there. One issue is with the VR sensors, um, the variable voltage. So the faster you go, the higher the voltage. So Squirt has little pots to allow you to test that with a little flat blade screwdriver and adjust them to where it doesn't give you false triggers at low RPM or high RPM as well. To start off with, one of the things you'll notice is if you go to the Speedwino file, you go to reference hardware, and then you click on your board number, you'll find this schematic that you're seeing in front of you. And it details all, all the pin numbers that are out there, as well as a picture of the board and how those pin numbers are arranged. I'm going to refer to those quite often. Uh, here on my car, you'll notice this is my crank sensor. It's got three wires that are coming out. I'm doing it off the trigger wheel. I used one from DIY. It is really close to the water pump pulley. But here I'm going to dive back in. So the 5 volt pulled from 13, the ground from 12, and the input from the hall sensor went into 25. And then here's how it coordinates on the schematic. So here is pin number 13, here is pin number 12, and pin number 25. On the Mega Squirt, it's a little bit different. So on this one, I pulled the 5 volt from the TPS sensor. The input was on to the 24, pin number 24, and then uh, as well as the ground on pin number um, 1. Sensor. On my car, it's a yellow and black wire. Uh, here on the Speedwino, you can see that it goes into pin number 10 and 19. And then uh, here on the main schematic, I'll do the same thing. So here is pin number 10, and then there is pin number 19. And uh, that pretty much covers the Speedwino side. On Mega Squirt, it's a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be the big ground on pin number 7. And then uh, also on pin number 21 is going to be the input or the return from the sensor. A T sensor. This one is a little more fun. In this case, uh, it's going to be matching with Mega Squirt on the input, but uh, pin number 9 is the ground, and pin number 20 is the input back from the sensor. Uh, here it is on the board. You can see here is pin number uh, 9, and then uh, pin number 20. On the Mega Squirt side, we're still going to use that same massive ground on pin number 7, and then we'll use pin number 20, ironically enough, for the input as well. Sensor uh, for Speedwino, it's going to be pin number 28, 23, 22, uh, and that would cover the 5 volt, the ground, and then the input. And again, here on the board, uh, it's going to be 28, the 5 volt, 23, the ground, 22, and then the input is 22. Uh, over to the Mega Squirt, though, it's going to be a little different. So we're going to tap it in that same 26 line that we got the 5 volt before. The 7 is that main ground, and the 22 is then the input back from the TPS signal. Called the oxygen sensor. So this is going to be uh, pin number 21 on a Speedwino. You can see it here on the schematic as well. For Mega Squirt, it's going to be pin number 23, as called out there. Last up, it's going to be all the outputs. So by outputs, I mean... Uh, basically injectors and spark. However you're going to wire it up. Now spark is the one that usually takes the most time. Injectors are pretty much wire half of it to a battery, wire the other half of it to the ECU, and you should be good. 
some of them you wire up to resistor power. All right, so here's a more interesting one. Here's my Spark coils. Uh, they're all LS2 coils. They're ran in. They're good to go. Uh, I'll pull out the plug on this one really quick, kind of show you. Um, actually, I'll zoom into this picture right here. The key thing is C. So C right here is what's running into speed. We know in my case, it also works the same in Megasquirt, but I'm gonna wire it up as wasted spark. So that means one and six fire at the same time, five and two and so on. Uh, so they use the same signal there. On the packs, so seven, 33 and 34, 34 and 33, my apologies. Um, but what this does is seven is wired to six and uh, one as my cylinders, and then two is, you know, as it goes in the, the firing order. Location of those three outputs uh, here on the schematic. Now on Mega Squirt, it's a little bit more unique. You can use the one main output on 36 and wire that up to a single coil. You can also go in there and go to MS Extra and look for the main uh, unique ones if you're going to be wiring up all individual. I did that a while ago and uh, it was kind of fun. You'll see here is just kind of the file vision of how I uh, put together everything and went it that way. All right, so injectors. And my injectors, I wired up half of the plug to each injector to the 12 volt positive, ran that back to a fuse uh, that turns on with the keys on. Here's the schematic. Now this one's a little bit more messy and short. Um, I had to pair them up and I can only use the first injector. So I had to use one, 40, two, 39, and then three and four. And that covered the three main injectors that I'm using. On the schematic, this is gonna look a little nasty, but the same thing, one, 40, 39 or 2, 39, 3, and 4, uh, all of those being used here. On the Mega Score, it's a lot more easy because it's two injector banks. So they do batch or simultaneous, and it's going to be filling up plugs 32 to 35 more fun. This has to do with the idle air valve. Now I'm using a Bosch three wire idle air valve. So in this case, Speedwindle handles this quite well. I simply been able to plug it into uh, idle air valve number one, and uh, then I have a high current output number two that I'm gonna be using there. I'm gonna be using both those wires there. And then the third wire gets plugged into uh, power. On the board, same thing. Here you can see the two outputs that I'm using, the high current one, as well as the idle out. On Megasquirt, it's a little bit different. They only have one real idle air valve, out when you're not using a stepper motor. So you can see that drawn out right there. My best case scenario is I did, uh, I had this car running on Mega Squirt, and then I piggybacked and did a completely new sensor. So on Mega Squirt, I ran a crank sensor. On Speedwino, when I converted it, I made a really quick cam sensor cut up everything and, and do a clean cut because this is my daily, I went ahead and I made my own cam washer. I took a really thick washer and I cut out a 24 minus two tooth pattern. And it was a 12, or sorry, 24 minus two. So essentially act as a 12 minus one crank sensor. And what I did is I used that cam sensor to power Speedwino by itself. And then I started slowly wiring everything together. So I could literally go in there, start the car, have it running at idle the whole time while I'm playing around and seeing if Speedwino can give me a good spark angle. So that was something that was awesome. If you have a chance to do something like that, plan it out, make sure you're doing it at steps and uh, that way you're not blowing out a starter or uh, wasting your time. Don't try and throw extra mods at the car when you do that. You wanna go from a running driving car to running driving car on a standalone. That's gonna be the best case scenario. You're gonna have better success that way. Then you can do your turbo kit or whatever mod that you're doing to take advantage of the standalone ECU. It's just gonna give you a better success rate. If you go in there and say, well, I'm getting rid of the stock computer because I'm doing a new cam. Okay, I understand. But if you throw that cam in before you do the stock or to do the standalone ECU update, you're going to run into more problems trying to tune around that cam and make sure that everything is right. Your, you know, your mechanical timing and your ignition timing, everything's going to compound and you have too many moving variables to really give yourself a lot of confidence. So if you do it in bite-sized pieces, things will go better. All right, so that really was a lot to bite off all at once. Um, just keep in mind, look for the reference material, read up, 
do it piece by piece. Make sure that you're not biting off more than you can chew at one single time. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm going to be diving more back into my series of uh, kind of more of the software side of it, doing the settings, everything like that. Uh, let me know if there's anything specific you're looking for. Uh, you know, hopefully you had fun. I've been uh, tinkering around with this three-wire Bosch valve that should be coming shortly and how I finally got this uh, tuned out very well. Anyway, uh, take care. Stay tuned.